with lager brewing in my world, it's it's about being patient. We have to be patient. And it goes back to every little step. We do step infusion. Most people don't. We have to hit those temperatures and those times. And then and then further on into the brewing, whether it's adding hops in, into the whirlpool or not, or when we go uh, into fermentation, keep it cool, be patient. Welcome to the San Diego Brewers Guild presents the Capital of Craft podcast. I am your host, Eric Fowler, Executive Director for the Brewers Guild. I'm Jeff Fox, and I'm uh, the president of uh, both Star Fox Media and Beer Media Co. And just an overall amazing beer drinker. I, I do enjoy it, you know? <laughs> and that's what really matters. But we're excited to sit down with two people that I personally call really good friends and and you know, professional colleagues to talk about one of my favorite things, loggers. And what does that actually mean from production or style? Uh, Jacob, you want to take it away and introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, In uh, 2015, I started as a, uh, just a retail guy at the home brewer, rest in peace. Thank you, George Thornton, for everything you did for us. Um, and then started taking over the brew house in 2017. So that was my professional debut and uh, brewed with, um, you know, over 300 unique recipes, 100 plus yeast strains. I mean, got a real uh, in-depth encyclopedic uh, familiarity with brewing styles, techniques, you know, small batch, but, you know, a big, you know, breadth of, of um of different things. And, um, then 2020 started with, uh, Doug here at Puesto and, uh, have been brewing Mexican style lagers with a passion. Yeah. It's so real so. geeky. And maybe we could talk, you know, get in, in a little bit into more details on what that dairy system used to look like compared mm-hmm. to some of the, uh, yeah. Equipment Big difference. Yeah. Differences yeah. that you deal <laughs> yeah. with now. Doug. Uh, well, my name is Doug Hasker. Uh, I, uh, have been brewing forever. 100 years old. I uh, started with Gordon Beersh in 1990 in San Jose and uh, moved to San Diego in 98, built a bunch of them and uh, learned uh, how to make German lagers, really good ones. And then uh, Gordon Beersh closed, Puesto opened in the same building. They said, you're not going anywhere, tied me to a tank and <laughs> said, you're going to learn how to make Mexican lagers, which I already kind of was doing anyway. And um, and here we are. It's, that was we opened uh, July of 2020. Tough time. Can, yeah, exactly. Middle, yeah, of, middle of COVID. Time almost, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so now we're making uh, really, really good Mexican lagers. And mm-hmm. so we're really proud of them. And we're here to talk about them. This is Jacob Bosch, by the way. He didn't yeah, say his last name. Did I not do that? I'm sorry. I, I came from the home room. Everybody knew he's, me. He's been yeah. my assistant since 2020. So, right. um, uh, the the best assistant anyone could ever ask oh, for wow. so sweet. on camera and <laughs> it's on record now. On record. Yeah, exactly. I didn't mean to. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Doug, I think your your story and every all of San Diego, I think, was rooting for you when Gordon Beers closed and you ended up coming out pretty quickly that you were staying in the same brew house that you really helped define and and you've always been known for brewing really classic to style beers. Um, which often lacks with a lot of breweries, especially new ones that are opening up. Um, so to see you go from one brewery that's known for classic styles to another who wants you to brew very similar classic styles is just an awesome fit. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was an easy transition. I, I was unemployed for less than a day, which <laughs> which was awesome. I'm sixty something years old, and and I freaked out for twenty four hours, and and so I was hired the next day with Puesto. Um, but yeah, I'm, I would say classically trained through the Vine Stefan sort of t- teachings and then to transfer that over to Mexican beers was easy. We had a patriarch at, uh, at, uh, Puesto grandpa, he financed everything. We've lost him about a year and a half ago, but when I first met him, uh, he was in commercial real estate, which is how he did all that. But he asked me, he said, can you make Pacifico better than Pacifico? And you can make, can you make Dos Equis Amber better than Dos Equis does, Negra Medela better than Medela does. And I said, sure. And I didn't really know how I was going to do that. So I had a couple months between the jobs off. I floated in a pool and said, how the, how the hell am I going to make Pacifico better than Pacifico? 
And and we learned that it that's, there are a bunch of people that helped me in town. Yeah, and uh, uh, helped me get there. But we pretty much nailed it first time. So yeah, I, I agree. I mean, your your beers are always awesome. Um, taking my wife there, it's a good date night spot. At White Labs, we believe in the science and creativity that propels our industry. Our dedication to exceptional quality means we carry out the same standards and care for every batch for consistently superior products. We pride ourselves in fueling the brewing community by offering new product innovations, educational resources, and a collaborative atmosphere, empowering brewers to make the best beer possible. Check us out at whitelabs.com and follow us on Instagram at whitelabsyeast for the latest happenings. Happy fermentations! Now is a harder time than ever for breweries to navigate the rapidly changing market, but Beer Media Co. is here to help. As a proud partner of the San Diego Brewers Guild, we are a full-service digital marketing and content creation company that works with San Diego breweries to reach new customers and create amazing engagement for their websites and social media accounts. If you are a small brewery owner trying to figure out the whole social media thing, or a larger brewery looking to up their engagement, send us a message at info at beermedia.co because we know SD Beer. Hi brewers. Are you working on a special project? Wondering how to get that delicious fruit flavor to come through your beer or seltzer? Well, SNS Flavors would love the opportunity to help you out. SNS Flavors has a wonderful MOQ of a single gallon, as well as quick turnarounds with all orders and samples, shipping out within three to five business days. Let's work together today and have samples in your hand by the end of the week. Check out www.ssflavors.com to fill out a sample request. Again, that's www.ssflavors.com to fill out a sample request. We can't wait to help you with all of your flavor needs today. What does that process look like to actually, first of all, define what's better? I mean, those are some of the largest selling beers Mm -hmm. in the nation and Mexican beers have been the fastest growing category for quite some time. So when you say, how do you make it better? What does that process look like to you, to the decision makers that you're reporting to, and then to your guests coming through the door? Better balanced beers, I think for me, especially the amber and the dark beer, I wanted to create recipes that were... Um, complex yet delicate, which I don't find in Negra Modelo. And I don't really, I get a gritty feeling, the wrong, the wrong sorts of, of malts in, the, in uh, Dos Equis Amber. And so I, I tackled it like I, wanted, I want to make beer that I want to drink. Overall, that, though, is an umbrella that just says fresher. And I think that's the big thing. We did, when we were making these beers, we did a lot of of uh, blind taste tests and we won on every one of them. And the reason I think was more because freshness, the freshness shows uh, immediately. And I think Jacob could probably yeah. talk more about, about uh, what we're doing and, and, and how the recipes are, are delicate and, and approachable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's taking a you know, uh, like classical German technique driven with artisanal ingredients um, and, uh, you know, macro Mexican beers or macro beers in general are meant very cold, straight out of the bottle, straight out of the can. I mean, if you pour that into a, into a nice glass and let it warm up to, you know, 40, 45 degrees, it's not, it's not a tasty beer, you know? So yeah, it's highly pasteurized, it's highly too, pasteurized. Right? you know, it's, it, the whole, the whole, um, process for making those beers is, it's different, different goals, different standards. So applying a lot of these classical German techniques and, um, and, and, but fitting it into the profile of what a Mexican lager, what we want it to taste like, or, or, you know, have the specs Mm -hmm. that we're shooting for that really, you know, most people are probably shooting for in that style is, um, is the difference. And and, and I think that's what comes through. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. The freshness I think is a really good point. That's often overlooked in craft beer today. Mm -hmm. I think 10 plus years ago, people really understood from the source meant something. And, you know, you off, you often hear I, the Guinness in Ireland tastes so much better. And, and I know that some commercial beers do have some recipe changes when they get exported, but like, you know, no shit. If you're in Ireland on vacation. Of course <laughs> yeah. it's going to taste better. Yeah. Um, a lot of beers are a time and a place. My, mm-hmm. one of my favorite beers is off the bottling line at Vine Stefan. It's just, 
It oh, just, what a flex. It's <laughs> just the be- it's yeah. just the best yeah, beer. Get pressure than that. Yeah. If I can interject something too, I, I uh when I was put coming up with the recipes, uh, Ryan Brooks was a, a big help. Many mm-hmm. many people were were but Ryan uh Brooks was still at at uh Coronado. Mm-hmm. So we able we were able to use their lab and we brought we brought I don't know 20 different uh Mexican lagers and had them analyzed. We analyzed them mm-hmm. and uh, surprised at at uh, starting gravities and lower gravities, and I thought these beers were drier. They weren't. They were mm. they were a little sweeter, a little and a little more malty in the finish. And so we learned a lot that day, and and then proceeded onto the our, these recipes. That Was we're there doing. a difference in carbonation levels that would maybe change some of that perception of we dryness? We didn't check carbonation. Yeah, that would be interesting. It would to see. be. Yeah. Hmm. So you know, coming from the home brewer where you said you used hundreds of yeast strains and then going to work for with yeah. Doug and, and brewing very simple, not right. simple styles, yeah. but um, very old world styles over and over again. Like how, how did that approach affect you as a brewer and the way you had to approach your, your work and what were you looking at with the fermentation profile? Well, the, um, the cool thing was to just focus very much on process, you know, every, and, and I think this probably speaks to like lager brewing in general is that it's process, you know, it's the very, uh, it's the very minutia of, of the decisions that are made all the way from, you know, sourcing water, water content, um, those kinds of things. So it was switching from, okay, how do I brew all these different beer styles to what are all of the knobs, the little levers that make or break, you know, very simple, clean beers. And, and that's, what's been really cool is, um, working on our brew house, which, you know, obviously has a huge impact on, on the uh, finished product. I think that's overlooked a lot in lager brewing or, you know, maybe all types of brewing is the geometry of the, the mash ton, you know, your fermentation tanks, and um and how all of those things you know will affect uh the, a beer that is literally just like water malt yeast like very little hops um all of the little nuances of each of those ingredients comes through and and i i, I think that's something that we'll probably talk about right um modern modern mm. lager brewing and uh mm like European style traditions. I'd, I mean, I'd love it if you guys could kind of go over like, you know, just a definition, like both with the, the taste, the ingredients and kind of the process, the difference between um, both kind of that old school style, as well as the differences between like Mexican and German lagers. I think like that would just be kind of cool for the audience as well. Yeah. I get asked a lot that question yeah. because I'm, everybody knows me as a German brewer. Exactly. And uh, a grumpy old man, all of that. <laughs> Which one first? The, yeah, the, uh, depends on, you know. <laughs> um, I you, have opinions my, there. My, stand, yeah, my, my standard answer is um, we add some corn. It's, it's, it's really similar. We mm-hmm. add some corn, and then Jacob and I speak Spanish on brew day, mm-hmm. and we tell the word that no, we love it. Yeah. Te amo, te yeah. amo. Yeah. And so that's really the difference. It, it's uh, it, to expand on what Jacob was saying a little bit is is uh, with lager brewing in my world, it's it's about being patient. We have to be patient, and it goes back to every little step. We do step infusion. Most people don't. We have to hit those temperatures and those times, and then and then further on into the brewing, whether it's adding hops in into the whirlpool or not, or when we go uh, into fermentation, keep it cool. Be patient. Let it let it finish out, and take the time. We're not pushed by time. And and then my biggest thing we'll probably talk about it later is is secondary the, all the diacetyl rest that nobody is doing that the way what we're doing. We're doing what Vine Stefan taught, and I'll probably get into that in a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean let's so. let's dive into it now, right? So. There's so many different modern approaches to making lager. And from the yeast side, I saw that every day. Craft brewers have tried to innovate process in every single way. And a lot of it's for the better. But when you look at within the industry on who you ask everybody what their favorite lager breweries are, it's probably the ones that are 
doing it the really traditional way. Yeah, 100%. And so how do you feel about modern enzymes like ALDC to mitigate that diacetyl production compared to that extended, you know, that rise in temperature and that extended rest? And then how does that get affected by the business needs of needing to turn a tank or somebody knocking on your door saying, you know, the, t- the tap room or the, the brew pub has been out of this beer for a week. What's going on? I'll let Jacob finish it, but I'll preface this by, we haven't used that it yet. We've done a whole bunch of research on it. Uh, we just haven't used it yet. And we're reluctant because we don't have those pr- production uh, uh, guidelines, people uh, leaning over us, telling that they need, they need something in a hurry. You don't have to, right. Uh, but also to, uh, to talk about patients and about, about traditional versus whatever. And, uh, we were on the drive up here. We were talking about uh, Jeff Bagby and what he's doing with his loggers, and he waits. He does slow fermentation. He waits, and I'm not sure anybody. Th- th- very few people are making better loggers than Bagby is right now. Attention, brewing professionals! Are you looking to elevate your presence in the heart of San Diego's craft beer industry? Consider joining the San Diego Brewers Guild as a professional or affiliate member today. Access exclusive benefits designed to propel your craft to new heights. Gain entry to premier industry events and educational resources, and forge vital connections within our brewing community. Visit sdbeer.com to explore the full list of advantages that a membership offers. Join the Capital Craft Podcast and the San Diego Brewers Guild celebrating craft beer in San Diego since 1997. Malt Europe Malting Company is based in North America, specializing in growing and producing quality malts for the craft beer and distilling industries. With local farms and malt houses spread across the United States, Canada, and Mexico, our commitment to excellence is fully ingrained into every batch we produce, ensuring breweries and distilleries of any size can create the finest beverages on the planet. Visit www.malteuropemaltingco.com to learn how Malt Europe can support your malting needs. Contact us at customersuccess at malteurope.com or 844-546-MALT for questions or to place your order. So from, mm-hmm. from brew day to package, when you say wait, are you talking about six weeks? What does that look like? The the fermentation alone, the, the beer itself is five weeks. Wow. That's, that's what Vine Stefan teaches. It's about a week of fermentation and four weeks of, of lagering. And, and that goes through different temperatures. And it's, uh, it includes your diacetyl rest, but also uh, all the conditioning and, and uh, natural carbonation, which we do. We don't own a carbonation stone. We never have. I never, I never have. And so all our beers are naturally carbonated. And so it gets, it, uh, you, ha- you have to be patient in that regard. Mm-hmm. And even with diacetyl, uh, there were some people that, that sort of forced me to slow down. George Thornton is one of them, J- Jacob's old boss. Uh, Travis Smith over at Society mm-hmm. forced me to slow down. There was a few things. If I had a problem, you know, I go out there. And, and um, so we haven't, t- I'll let Jacob talk about the enzyme part of it. We do use uh, hop flour f- enzymes for our uh, stability for our IPA hops. Hmm. That's the only real enzyme that we use, right? Go ahead and, yeah. and talk about it. Um, well, I, I, I think, um, was it New, New Brewer just had a great um, cover story with um, uh, the brewers at Beer Shot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, any brewer that's been anywhere in the country, especially Denver, like where, where do they go? Right. Every time. Every, every time. time. You and I have had beers there together. Yeah, it's packed. <laughs> yeah. And so to like go to somewhere like that, which is even like, they're even more extreme. I mean, they're doing like the Vine Chef on, yeah, you know, I mean, eight weeks. Yeah, they're horizontal tanks. Horizontal, the, like, uh, you know. old brew, copper brew house. Yeah, they oh, a copper brew house. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And so to like go somewhere like that and then just love it and then go home and be like, I can do that in three weeks. You know, that's the difference. Right. Is yeah, I think we can make a pretty decent beer and, and that has lager properties that has, that hits a lot of those, um, you know, objective points, but the difference, the real difference is in that, in that process and that longer time frame, the slower fermentation, cold, uh, cold conditioning, you know, um, colder pitching temperature, um, cleaner water. That's, it's really those are the the things that somewhere like beer shot that we all go and like worship um and there's a lot of legitimacy to that and to you know it's kind of hubris like craft brewer hubris to like 
oh, I can do that, but different, or I can use modern enzymes, or I can, you know, shortcut it through hybrid yeast or something like that. And yeah, there's like, they're good, but they're, are they like amazing? Are they what you dream about when you go to Germany or that you drink, uh, you know, in Munich? It's not, they've right? Been, it's just like that's recipes a fact. for a really yeah, long time. And so <laughs> there's a balance, like, yeah, years, like yeah. production schedules are important and you got to do it. But that's, that's like, you just got to be honest with yourself. Like, that's the difference. And so having the time and the timeline to, to make that kind of beer and package it, which I think people are doing, you know, there's craft breweries that are doing that. But if you can't do it and it doesn't turn out the same, or it's good, but when you compare it to something more traditional, like that's, that, you know, that we get that that's question noticeable. all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get that question all the time. Well, you know, what should I do? It's like, yeah, just open the VLB book, like, mm -hmm. you know, Coons and like follow that procedure. Like, oh, we don't have time to do that. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Like, but mm -hmm. that's the difference, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it sounds like the two of you have very similar ethos, which matters a lot for a small team, mm -hmm. right? If you had different takes on <clears throat> what to find quality beer and what that process should look like. I'm sure you two wouldn't be sitting here together today. So perhaps. Yeah. It's <laughs> I'm the ultimate authority only because, uh, it's my ass on the line. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> He's <Well>. safe. <laughs> Doug said, <laughs> <laughs> pass the buck. Yeah. I think just before we let you guys go, um, I think it'd be awesome to kind of hear what your opinions are on San Diego beer in general and what makes it special and uh, maybe a little bit about the guild as well. Uh, I'll go first on this one. Uh, if I can say one thing that, that I think the local uh, lager guys are, are doing, everybody's making a lager now. And I didn't say it earlier, but I, I was in a fortunate position except for the fact that lagers were unfashionable for 20 years. When I started in the industry, lagers were very fashionable. Then Vinny made Planet of the Elder, and and uh, then they weren't, and and uh, Ballast Point did all of theirs, and Sculpin, and whatever happened for twenty years, and now they're back fashionable again. And everybody that, that most everybody that wants to make a lager comes and says they come talk to Doug, and mm -hmm. and the cool thing over all these years is that I've taught a lot of people what I know about lager making is that when we started to start make, making making uh, IPAs, then I had the best IPA brewers at my disposal for repay. So, so in that regard, we, we also make uh, pretty, pretty decent IPAs. As far as the technical part of brewing, I, there aren't very many really good Pilsners in town. I think there's a lot of good beer in town, but I don't think there's a lot of good Pilsners in town. And the biggest shortcut that I, that I see people make and uh, is, is in their diacetyl rest. It's, uh, it's, it's in their secondary they want to ramp up their temperatures after fermentation like they do in ale. And it all it does is make your beer floral. And mm -hmm. it adds a whole bunch of mm -hmm. uh, uh, esters that you don't want in your beers. And they don't know any better because that's what you do with ales. And floral is good. And so I tell everybody, and even I, I taught a, a silly class over at U, uh, UCSD for, for the beer certification program. And that was the main thing that I would talk about is, is don't don't go higher than your... Uh, fermentation temperature and your diacetyl rest because you're because you're not going to have clean beers. We also do. We didn't touch on it today. Um, we do step infusion on the mash side, and that's a big thing. We can harness different things from your grain at different temperatures, and mm -hmm. and a lot of these premier systems just can't do that. Right. There's a handful of breweries that actually do that in town. Those are the two biggest things that separate us from from everybody else making lagers in town, and. I've hit on them. Let's see what Jacob has to say <laughs> about those. <laughs> well, and, and it's something that's been talked about to death and that's, you know, water, your, your water profile and, um, the San Diego's water has gotten a lot better. I think, you know, recently that they've kind of stabilized the calcium sulfate, but still the overall TDS is super high. I mean, it's minerally, no matter what, you know, that's, you know, it used to be 800. Now it's like, well, I think we just looked at our water report was like 500 something. No, I think it was 900. Yeah. It used to be crazy. So it's better, but it's better. Um, but is it good enough for, uh, a, like a super delicate, you know, Hellas or, or, you know, a Mexican, you know, Pacifico style 
lager Sorry, and probably Jeff, not sure probably not <laughs> um no. probably not um and i think that's a big d difference and we're lucky enough to have a, like a serious ro system which strips it really soft and do you mm. do you blend we're we blend a little bit yeah RO but it's still very very back. soft yeah yeah we're, we're um, em emulating munich water 145 ppm so the ro will take it down to five ppm and mm -hmm. then we then we mix back up yeah. with street water mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's, I think a big, a big, um, obstacle for people. Uh, and, and it's just, it's, you can't get around that, you know, you can make a different kind of beer, but for like really soft, delicate, totally naked lager, it's going to come through in some one way or another mm -hmm. mouthfeel, carbonation, you know, percept, perceived bitterness, all of those things. It's like, okay. Yeah, this is good, but it's sharp. Or there's, um, you know, there's some other notes in there that aren't, you know, what you really want or what you were expecting. Um, so, of those three points, those are probably our the biggest things that we, you know, use and and advise and talk about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I do appreciate being invited today and to share this and to be part of what, what you're doing, you're trying to do. And I am really excited for the guild and the future and uh, with the new leadership and see what happens with you, Eric. I'm, I really appreciate being here today. Thanks. And thanks and, for taking time to yeah. spread I mean, the gospel. Yeah, I know this I, could be a couple hour totally, discussion. Totally I know yeah, we've probably had it over little. beers before, but no, right, I think, but, it, I think it's great. No, that's what I love about the guild. Like just this, just getting together and you know, I was talking about, community. yeah, talk about, yeah. um, us brewers and our kind of ancient, um, brotherhood, you know, humanhood. Um, and so the guild is just an extension of that. It's the so. catalyst to bring everybody yeah, together everybody do, yeah. yeah, and talk, talk shop. So yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you guys thank for you. coming. Yeah, and, uh, so we should have a beer. And yeah. I think we should yeah. have a beer. If you want to hear more interviews like this one yeah. and um, learn more about San Diego beer and what makes it special, uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to this channel and you can follow us at SD Brewers on social media to learn about everything that's going on in SD beer. Thank you so much for watching.